Okay. One of the things about Blade that struck me, the male character Jake. J uh, Jack, yeah. Jack, sorry. Jack. Uh, who is the, he's ultimately seen as being the guy who's riding around in the car and going after women. Hey, you, you give him a speech that has, you give him dimension. You give him quite a lot of dimension. Do you, did you purposefully do that or is it something that just came out of you? Did you just place yourself inside of him and place yourself inside of a character who does unsavory things but is human? Is that what you did or how did you create that character? I, yeah, that's interesting. Um, I knew from theater, all the theater I'd seen and all the theater I'd read and all the, that, that it's no fun to just make a villain and not have, and just, he's just evil because mm -hmm. that's kind of cheating. Yeah. Um, so I knew that, I knew that in here, that he had to have some kind of other side, but I hung him on one of the incidents that happened that led to Blade. I was walking, I was, she talks about it, that, that mm -hmm. opening monologue. I was walking across the bridge uh, over the low track where the women work mm -hmm. and a car pulled up and offered me a ride and he had a baby seat in the back. Mm -hmm. And I thought, and it was cold because it was Winnipeg, mm -hmm. it's always cold. And the, the Disraeli bridge is especially windy. Mm -hmm. And I thought I could take this ride. And then I thought, no, I don't, I just don't break your rules for anything. I'm like, but he's got a baby seat in the back. And then the, and then the killing of the young woman, mm -hmm. that the one, I, the particular one I knew. And so I started, those things started to fit together. And I thought, what if that guy uses the, the baby seat as bait? Mm -hmm. Like he, that makes him safe. And then what if that guy actually has a baby? Mm -hmm. And so because the thing we do as playwrights and as theater artists, but in this case as playwrights, is try to work out why things happen in the world. Like we're just mm -hmm. always trying to make order out of chaos. Mm -hmm. So here's a woman being killed. Here's men killing women. Why does this happen? Mm -hmm. And so we just impose order on the chaos, which is why I just tried to get inside that guy was driving that car if he were the one who was killing women get inside his head and figure out what was the stressor what was the thing that tilted him mm -hmm. and made him made his misogyny turn into violence mm -hmm. like that like what is it that he you know and this was like way before csi or criminal minds or all the murder murder kill kill shows that were on tv this was like 1990 so mm -hmm. I didn't know I know I know now a lot more from watching television about <laughs> all of those things stressors and right, you know yeah. mm -hmm. but in, I, in that case I was just trying to work out what would make a man who had a baby want to kill women hmm. and it's something that you know unfortunately it's you know it's happened a few times in this country um, and uh, the police tend to lump these women together and to not do anything. Why is that? What is that? It's about seeing, I mean, we're, it's the thing we're struggling with right now with Idle No More, right? Mm -hmm. It's about seeing some people as less. You already gave me the, the shape of it, mm -hmm. right? Yep. Black folks are here, but yep. Indians are down here. Yeah. And you know, down here are Indian women. Right. So we're actually below in terms of the yeah. the, the order, the pecking order. Mm -hmm. Except now, Idle No More is kind of starting to, to try and flip that because it's being led by Aboriginal women. Mm -hmm. And a lot of the elders, men, are sort of getting up at these things and saying, all right, men's, you know, take your war bonnet and get to the back behind the women. Just have their back and shut up mm -hmm. because the women are leading. It's funny, all of my experiences with Aboriginal women have been with really strong, intelligent women and really powerful women who have done great things. It's funny because when you say that about the, the power structure, I go, that's, I'm sure that that's true, but all of the women that I know, like yourself, like, like other women that I've met, I just think, man, the, you know, Aboriginal men have some amazing women that they can, you know, depend on. But we're so broken, right? right. Like when you if you look at the way our communities are, a lot of Aboriginal women are raising the children because mm -hmm. our men have 
you know, shiny <laughs> wandered off yeah. after something else. Wow. So that's, we're still dealing with lots of, lots of broken in our communities. I think Jamaican women could feel a lot of sympathy for you. I think, you know, you know, I can say that, but <laughs> <laughs> I think that, uh, you know, there are actually similarities uh, within uh, our cultures that are, that are unfortunate, you know, and sad because I think much like, I mean, I don't know the experience of being an Aboriginal male, but much like the experience of being a, a West Indian male in Toronto, there's this, and because of certain inequalities and alienation, you just, you, you, you were broken too, and you, you don't give the women in your life the respect that they deserve, which is all too common. And I just, it's uh, obviously something that has to be, it, it happens in the Aboriginal community as well. Very much so. Uh, it's funny, to, you know, I really think that uh, uh, I should get a group of my, my Jamaican community <laughs> and we'll get some Algonquins sit together. We'll get, I'll get some patties going. Absolutely. And, you know, and, and we'll, we'll have a great old time. And just talk. Um,